welcome back to the Sunny and Shea show here on Brit Asia TV. Nina's still sitting with us here on the sofa, ladies and gentlemen. And we have our prize possession, make it up home without an aubergine aeroplane. And Nina has very kindly signed it. Thank you so Thank much, you Nina. Um, from talking from one comedian to another now, um, he has had a sold out tour in London called Muslims Do It Five Times a Day. And Sunny and I really want to know what that is. Please put your hands together for Artif Nawal. Hey! How are you, sir? You're right. Hey, do you want to do it as well? There yeah, we yeah, go. Yeah, there yeah. We oh, is that, that's how you do it? Oh, that's okay. How many is it? Two, three? Two, my friend. Okay, so three is a bit weird. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry, I didn't know the etiquette of, you know, bobbing heads. Oh, yeah. So, um, it's amazing to have you in the studio. I know you've been so busy touring. Tell well, us. I, I tell you what, this working 10 minutes a night is rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much. It takes it out of I you, know, right? I right? 10 minutes a night. It's crazy. But honestly, what, what do Muslims do five times a day? Uh, can I say that? Yeah, 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 of course I yeah. Can. We pray five times a day is the obvious answer. I mean, the title of the show was like a play on, I mean, it's double entendre for obvious reasons, but the idea was to kind of uh, bring in a different kind of audience, people. I, when I did this show, I've been doing shows for years, you know, they've all been kind of a bit scatty and a bit kind of wild and wacky, and I've always gone for a bit of a slapsticky style, but mm. uh, I got a little bit more politically aware recently, and I was really aware of Islamophobia, especially mm. in the UK, and it's really frightening, so. Uh, I, I didn't like the voices that were out there representing my community, so I thought, well, wh why, wh why shouldn't I put mine out there? Mm -hmm. I've got a valid viewpoint, so yeah, I kind of went with this show, and uh, it, it talks about Muslim culture. It's, it's, it's great that it's been supported so nicely by uh, South Asian audiences, but uh, I'm even more pleased that kind of non-South Asians have enjoyed it, and they've liked it, and I, yeah. I, I, kind, of, I kind of like to think it's made them think a little bit. Think about what they think ah. about how. That's the question. What are they thinking there? about? The thing is people put people put uh, you know Muslims in stereotypes. Sadly, yeah. these days, and it's absolutely true. I mean, I was I can tell the story of how I got here today, and you know I was on the tube coming, uh, trying to get into the station from London from which I get here, and uh, I was on the platform, and the train just legged it onto the train, just making it as the door shut, and there were these three guys who were sitting opposite me. They looked at me, and they got up and they walked off the carriage. Really? Wow. Wait, was that their stop? I was devastated. So I did the honourable thing, which was yeah. to get up and follow them onto their carriage. That's why she's so funny. I, I put them onto their carriage, and they got really worried. So they looked at me, and one of them wanted to talk to me. So he said to me, uh, "Mate, where does where does this train go?" And I looked at him, and I went, "Jannat." <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know what it meant. Well, <laughs> I thought it was funny. Uh, so here's the thing: when you when you have these kind of you know these kind of experiences in you know in today's society, yeah. in today's you know we live in Britain, we are British, you're British, you're oh, yeah. educated here. Do you well, find well? Yeah, but the thing is, you went to university with my wife. I did. We went to yeah. university together. So okay. very talented. Well, some talented people come. <laughs> oh, <laughs> university. Yeah. 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 So when you, when you see that kind of reaction, does it sometimes you think we've got a long way to go? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I mean, I always enjoyed performing, right? And it's the first time I've kind of tried to make it about changing people's minds, their attitudes, and sharing something, a lighter part of my culture, because mm. it's not as heavy as people make it sound. You know, the idea behind the show is just to demonstrate Muslims are just like you. Mm. The things that you do, we do as well. We just happen to do a couple of other things, and that's fine. And the things that you differently do differently, that's fine as well. So the idea was just to try and be a little bit uh, smarter, a bit more focused, and of course, all the, all the singing and dancing and all that stuff is still there, as you guys know. I mean, I, I'm just a big time closet Bollywood fan. I'm, I, I, I'm guessing some people here like Bollywood. You like Bollywood yeah. here? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, not even closet anymore. Where I am on TV, just say, yeah, I love, <laughs> love it. But yeah, this is the thing. So, I mean, I, I, and, I, and I still like to play with these things that I enjoy. And it's part of that wider narrative, isn't it? Muslims like Bollywood just as much as the next exactly. guy. You know? It's incredible. Let's talk cricket then, because you're a bit of a cricket fan, aren't you? Well, yeah, fan more than play, yeah. So, how, how do you explain, uh, you know, the performance of your team in the world stage? But Pakistan? Pakistan's my team, and I think they're doing pretty well. Do you guys agree? No Pakistan. Yeah, no, 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 we can we can ask the we can ask the obvious question. What do you think about India, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. I'm just yeah. saying. Just saying. It's easy when you get to play Sri Lanka in five matches. Oh, oh. no, here, here's a, here's the thing. Carl was here last time. Hit you yeah, but no, but, 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 but Pakistan are going through one of the best spells in their history at the moment. They just managed to beat uh, Australia. Are you defending them now? No, Sorry, I, I didn't know because I don't follow cricket, so you got to educate me on this. Uh, so so was Pakistan doing bad? Good. They're doing well. That's it. And, uh, I, I lost all interest in Pakistani cricket when Imran Khan left. Oh, yeah. 
That was it. That's it. There's a new one now. Have you? There's a new Imran Khan. His name is Imran Khan. No way. It's brilliant. Does he look like him? Is he as beautiful? Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, forget about it. Because the other day I heard Imran Khan's name. Can I, can I tell you a very funny Imran Khan story? Yes. Please. Please. I said to my husband, when, when I first met my husband, he said, is there any other man in the world you would leave me for? And I said, there's just one man. Imran Khan, <laughs> he's in love with him. And I thought, what? I'll never meet him. Right. I then go to an awards ceremony and I'm sitting next to him. No him. way! <laughs> and your husband had kittens. <laughs> no, he said, if he gets, if I get him, he gets Jemima. He was married to Jemima uh, at the time. Oh, and we, trade off. But I couldn't believe it. I, when he walked in, I went, I can't. And I couldn't speak. I actually couldn't speak. He sat next to me and he went, I. My knees, my knees just yeah. gave way, and I sat and I thought, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. To be honest, I really leave my wife for him right now as well. <laughs> <laughs> and, and your wife is obviously tweeting him right now as we speak, <laughs> like, sure. you know what I mean? Sure. Please, sub, are you? Are you? <laughs> So when, when it comes down to, you know, like you see, like Imran Khan, let's take Imran Khan for yeah, example, sure. right? Um, he is a, he's a cricket player, was a cricket player, uh -huh. and now he's a politician. Uh -huh. That transition, do you think he's the right person to represent that country after playing so many years oh, of cricket? Yeah, we need so much time to answer that question, man. <laughs> we'll just answer it yes or no. Uh, I think, yes, absolutely. I think okay. at the time, he's going to be the right person to lead, like, lead Pakistan as a nation. And, uh, you know, I mean, there's so much to it, we can possibly go into it, but uh, he's a great guy. I think he'd be a really nice person to represent Pakistan on the world stage. He's very likable, very well spoken, and he's pretty good looking as well. Yeah. He? <laughs> he does a lot for charity. He does, does a lot does. for charity. He does. Most certainly does. Now, when we're talking about these topics, these are all topics that you talk about in your comedy show. So, uh -huh. what's next for Artif Nawaz then? Because um, you're someone that a lot of, not just the Muslim community, but a lot of the South Asian community are looking at. We've got a legendary comedian and actress oh, sat yeah. right next Can to I you. Can I just say, by the way, it's such a pleasure oh. and a, a privilege to be sitting next That's to you. That's very kind. Thank you so much. A complete privilege. You have no, I've opened the door to so many comics and actors and just people like me to do what we want to do. Because before you, I mean, there was no option. Right. I was going to be a lawyer or a doctor or something. Yeah. That made me more money and if you ever want to be funny, just do it at home. Maybe I should yeah. be annoyed with you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is the thing. It's you, know, you kind of opened this door. And um, I mean, just to answer your question, next it's probably I'm taking Muslims to it five times a day on tour next year. So uh, going to be at the Edinburgh Festival, at uh, the Brighton Fringe, wow. uh, the Yorkshire Fringe, which is a new kind of fringe. There's a fringe everywhere. I'm gonna say. <laughs> um, and yeah, there'll be more dates in London as well, hopefully. So um, come on down. It'll be good fun. Yeah, brilliant. And let me ask you this though: um, What did the parents say when you said, "Mommy, Daddy, I'm going to be comedian"? All that money you spent on my education, forget about it. Exactly. Uh, I think, uh, to be fair, I don't think they know still. To be <laughs> I think they still think I have a job and they don't really know what it is. But, uh, you know, they love it. I, you know, they quite enjoy it. I think initially they were a bit weird about it. I mean, they were talking about 10 years ago. So I took them to shows. They saw me do my thing. I think it was weird for them because when I'm on stage, I'm playing my character and I feel very comfortable and I can be loud and arrogant and aggressive and whatever it is I need to be. Mm. But like off stage, I'm quite a private person. I'm not very good at socializing aside from outside of my friends. I'm not very good at networking. Uh, so I've, I've struggled with all that. So I think they just didn't see it until mm. they saw it. And right. when they saw it, it was great. The first time my parents saw me do stand-up and, and I did well, I was really happy. It was, so a, it was a nice it, moment. Here's a question for both of you. Um, you've done live stand-up as well, haven't yeah. you? So how do you deal with the hecklers? Yeah. I mean, like, you know, because you're easy. I flash them. That's what I can do. Anyone heckling? I what you do, but... I can't flash them. Let's put it that way. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can do that. But, yeah, no, I just put them down. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I, I, like, I like the heckles, actually. Really? Yeah, you actually, invite hecklers? You've okay. Got to, you've got to have that interaction, right? right? The energy in the place. And it gives you a very nice chance to kind of stab your authority in the room as well. So uh, I, I, I occasionally have different heckles and things like that. And over time, because you do so much stand-up, you hear every bit of abuse. So you have like a comeback ready. You know how like when you're out and about and somebody says something really mean to you yeah. and you walk down the road and 10 minutes later the perfect thing occurs to you. I wish I'd said <laughs> I that said that then. <laughs> a stand-up comic is in the perfect position to remember that thing and do it to the next person. Brilliant. It's wonderful. And what about you? How do you deal without, you know? No, that is it. Seriously? And actually, no, of course not. <laughs> I, want to go to, I want to go on YouTube right now. Like, I didn't need no idea to stand up at all. It depends what comes up at the time. You know, it's just like they're so, they're so... But do you invite it? Do you enjoy that? Because I know I Billy exactly. Connolly says, I don't like it. I, I hate it. I love live audience stuff. And right. The one thing about, goodness gracious me, although we do location stuff, yeah. we have a Friday night live. Right. And, you know, that's how we record it. Yeah. And you, we get hecklers in that. When we did the live tour, uh -huh. going all over the country, 
we had people shouting out stuff. You know when we did that going for an English sketch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right at the end. Too bland. And, which is amazing. Too bland. All bland, stuff. bland. How many plates of chips? 24. 24. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, people in the audience going, 142. <laughs> <laughs> and then you had to think of something instantly to get them to shut because it just didn't yeah. end. Oh. Brilliant. Brilliant. Bad enough, my friend. Maybe yeah. you stop with Absolutely. The, stop with the two plates of chips, Absolutely. maybe. I don't know. But there's, there's, there's things that happen to you when you're live. It just it, You just kind of come up with something. And that's the fun part of it. And it suits the person that says, because normally it's an idiot who heckles. Yeah. It really is. Sorry. It never is an idiot. Who heckles. Oh, <laughs> I think so. I don't, yeah. you, only, you want the idiots though. If you get you a do. smart heckle, I'm yeah. scared to death. What am I going to do? No, no, no. Because yeah. you know, last time we went to his show, I heckled him quite a lot, and mm. the whole stand-up thing was just me heckling him, and, oh, he, just, yeah, yeah. and he just kept <laughs> answering me back. Well, it was, great, though, it was so much fair. fun. Yeah. And yeah. Because I knew him, I felt very comfortable. Comfortable, yeah. <laughs> So, because you, if you know somebody reasonably well, then it's fine, then it's, it's great. Then it's fine, then it's But like, I always worry about it when you just kind of respond to somebody's heckle, you put them down. I mean, there's this one poor guy who came to my show and he made a couple of comments. And I said, oh, keep smiling, my friend. I'd like to see you smile because my favorite color is yellow. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and I felt bad about that. So, you know, after the show, I went up to him I'm so really sorry. He's like, no, you're right. I should switch to Colgate. My wife has been telling me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, dude. I don't mean to tap into it. That's pretty. But yeah, I mean, it's easier. You see, you're actually that. saying here on Bredasia TV that you feel bad after. after you should never feel bad. Oh, I love it. It's <laughs> amazing. It's, it's a beautiful feeling because, you know, I, 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 mean, I don't have, often get to be in control. I mean, people know about stand up. It's a tough industry, yeah. right? Yeah. You're on the grind, you're on the train, you're in the car, you're traveling up and down the country and trying to do little gigs. And it's not the most lucrative thing in the world. But for those 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes you're on stage, it's yours. And it's always such a privilege to be on microphone, be the designated ent entertainer for the night. People have paid 10 quid or whatever it is to come and see you perform. I, I love it. It's a beautiful feeling. We are here with these two guys still on the sofa. We're going to come back with our quick fire round. You are listening and watching The Sunny and Shea Show. So don't go anywhere.